Hello everyone, Leather King Scale here, also known as Scale, and welcome back to more Shadows of Reloathing. Well, we got a cursed item. Sit in the uncursing machine. You sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and pull the weird metal thing down over your head. What would you like to uncurse today? The dangerous pocket watch. The machine snorts, and the pocket watch is up in its... No, oh, snorts the pocket watch up in its dome and begins its strange loud work. The pocket watch is pulled this way and that. Its ticks become kinticks <laughs> and its talks become katoks. <laughs> and it has three hand wait, and as its three hands are forcibly bent back, you swear you hear screams. And when it's done, the watch falls into your lap. Its hands now set at exactly what time in real life I'm recording this. Uh, ten at the time it was 37 and 46 seconds, because now it's 10:38 at night. Yeah, an uncursed pocket watch reduces an enemy's things. Okay, maybe I should use that as the offhanded one. The watch's curse now resides within the machine. Want to project your consciousness into it? Sure, why not? In your mind's eye, you see the hands of the pocket watch spin back on themselves in a jittery violence. With each revolution, the face of the watch itself expands until it is larger than you, and the building, and the street. Your whole world lives in the blur of the fast-running hands, in which you see life go by in reverse sometimes. Submarines turn into long ships and cities to stone dwellings, cowboys to courtesans. You are traveling faster and faster to the beginning of time itself. There is no telling when this ride will end. Well, hold on tight. I am a dinosaur. I'm okay. Uh, Catalope is still sleeping on her tower. Eat towel. Eat the cat. I'm not gonna eat the cat. I'm not gonna eat Charles. Jessica looks pretty busy. Eat Jessica. No. Eat Gabby. No. I'm not gonna do any of that. Open the door to your bedroom. With those two salad forks? No, you lack the opposite of thumbs necessary to turn the doorknob. You're completely contained in here unless you can figure out how to open doors. I don't know about Anything about dexterity? I'm a dinosaur. I don't have that. Anyway. Break down the door. I'm a big dinosaur. If <laughs> you slap your prehistoric tummy against the wood and it doesn't make a dent. Maybe that's why dinosaurs went extinct. They couldn't open doors. Rawr. Love it. Um, maybe I can go out the front door? To-do list. Add to the list it includes dexterity. Nobody's calling right now. Check the notepad that says dinosaur, no phone number. I can eat the phone? Unstitch the rug? What all is going on? Well, that's our thumbnail. Um, I guess. Eat the phone? Chomp. Well, uh, attend thy temper. Well. Does that... Knock over chairs. You gained one dexterity. Um, I'm not gonna eat the cat. I don't want to. <sighs> Alright. Whoa there, Jose. What's got all those horns rattling? Been dipping into the nose paint again? Gabby doesn't talk like that. Hey, Gabby, I'm a dinosaur. Can you open the door for me? Uh, oh, I don't know. Never had the head for puzzles, Viola. It's got me kerfunked. Also, Gabby doesn't talk like that. Shh, partner, shh. <laughs> hey, Gabby, I'm a dinosaur. Whoop, pew, pew. I'm the quickest drawn in the West. Uh, great. 
eat Jessica? Does that mean I'm actually just talking? What strangeness afflicts thee? Never mind, for the sun transits the horizon. I have grown ever more in need. Okay. Ever more in need of thy assistance. Understand, whilst you sleep under this roof, thou art my lodger, and sign and a signature on this paperwork by me is required. Can you open doors for me? Hmm. Curious indeed, for I do not believe those doors to be locked. Well, what do I know? And thou will find in the telephone table tither a key to satisfy thy need. Did you start talking like this? A provocative remark, friend. By thee well made. Take your leave. Um. Hey, easy does it, baby. We're all hungry. Can you open doors for me? What's that? Greta garbled. Please help, I'm a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, baby. Knock over another chair. I got one dexterity out of that. Um, you might fit inside this machine. Okay, it would remain unsolved. Eat the cat. Oh, I actually... Oh. I didn't want to do anything to the poor cat. Do I actually have to eat it? I hope not. I can't think of what else to do. I can't figure out why I can't do anything. Real groovy pocket watch you got there, Viola. I like the way it tick, tick, ticks. Do you understand me? Yeah. A lot of power in that timepiece. A lot of power. Would you make a promise to me, baby? Would you promise not to throw that power away? A lot of good can be done with groovy power I'd like that, baby. Charles doesn't call me baby. I hear you, kitty cat. Would you say, kitty cat? Will you do me that promise? No. I don't get it. Um... I can't sign that. I can't talk to the cat. Hmm. I did I screw this up. Um, yeah, sure. I worry about this. Maybe I need to increase my muscle. Okay, hold on. Hmm. Let's see. Well, first off... Switch into that. For starters. Um, okay, that'd be physical armor, stench armor. See, that's the insanity of this. Is I need something that's going to increase... physicality. And I don't know how to do... I don't know how to do dexterity. Okay, so everything I previously did in here is already set. I don't understand. I think maybe I'm not able to do anything about this. Just yet? Maybe I can come back? 
I mean, am I still cursed? Looks pretty dizzy. Uh, Jessica looks pretty busy, but she always does. That letter from Uncle Murray was a real surprise. I didn't read it. What did it actually say? Basically, he just asked if I could come visit him because he needed help with something big and he knew I had an adventurous spirit. Huh, an adventurous spirit. Yeah, that's Murray, all right. I haven't seen him in ages. I mean, I only ever saw him at Crimbo and sometimes he came with us when we went camping in the summer. But after I moved out to go to college, we kind of lost touch except for birthday cards. But you dropped everything to come see him? Wasn't caring of anything of value. Does he crazy Uncle Murray? Of course. Does he still do that trick where he pulls five meat out of your ear? What? Ew. Yeah, it was super gross. I loved it when I was ten. Well, I bet he'll do it if you ask him. If you can find him. Yeah, here's hoping. Um... I guess I just... I don't... I don't have anything past this. Because I don't have the dexterity. I don't know how to get dexterity. I don't understand what I'm doing with the dinosaur thing. Yeah. I'm just really confused. How do you get more dexterity? Come on. Yeah, see, I'm not nearly that fast. Although, I'm glad that the, the high knees thing stayed. Yeah, I need seven muscle. I have five. I have five, and as far as I'm aware, I don't have anything else to increase it. I just don't think that I can. Hey, Viola, before you go to bed, I need you to approve a new tenant for the storefront next door. What? Why is that up to me? Charles shrugs. Somebody's got to do it. There's three applicants for the place. Okay, what are they? The first applicant is Trudgeons and Bludgeons. This fella is really excited about weaponry. Second is Ye Old Chemiker. Some SIT science lady who wants to sell potions. And the last applicant is Jardware's Hardware. I guess if your name's Jardware and your options are rhyming business names, well, it's pretty useful. Um, I mean, I guess the weapon or the hardware store. Okay, I'll get a moved in next door front ready for the applicants. Thanks, Charles. Hey, it's that rug from the boarding house. Miss Brewster must have had it sent to you as an additional gesture of gratitude. Or because she hates the way it looks and thinks it's cursed. Either way, it's a score. Hey, I like it. Alright, well, we got a bed. You can barely keep your eyes open at this point. Go to sleep. Yeah, I don't know. I want to solve that curse, but... I don't think I have the stuff for it yet. Okay, nothing out that general direction, but it's nice to see that I'm being chased by tentacles and burning luggage. All of your favorite pants. Gone. It's Jeff, the kid who used to bully you in third grade. Make amends. Hey, Jeff, listen. I just... No hard feelings, okay? I understand in retrospect that you must have had problems at home, and now I just want you to know everything is okay now. Jeff swats the overdue library book out of your hands. Ah, I see. Since this is just a dream version of you, you're still as much of a jerk as you were in the third grade. Jeff suddenly punches you, knocking out all of your teeth. Hey, if this was actually happening, I'd be really mad. You pick up your teeth and walk away. You got your teeth. What a jerk. Oh, it's that lady from Crimbo. It's the creepy Crimbo lady from the refrigerator factory. Now in literal nightmare form, move past her. Excuse me, I need to get past you. Why? Why are you in such a hurry to wake up, darling? It's Crimbo. You should still be making merry. Crimbo is months away. 
Oh, but it's always Crimbo in dreams, dear. Uh, Merry Crimbo, then. Merry Crimbo, dearie. I didn't have time to properly introduce myself before I'm Dark Noel. Oh, she's actually here. And affection as goofy as her name, she curtsies. Dark Noel, huh? You're really talking this mo taking this motif seriously, right down to your weird, evil-looking Grimbo hat. Her smile falters a little. Evil-looking? I was told... I told you at the refrigerator factory, it's just a... Wait... She points to the weird device she's holding at her hat and starts beeping as fast as irregular pattern. You're telling me that you can see the special Crimbo magic with your eyes? Uh, well, yes, if that's what it is, yes. Hmm, this is decently unfestive news. I better talk to the president. Uh, you want to talk to Calvin Coolidge about your Crimbo hat? I want to talk to the real president about you. Ah, I see. Yes, that's the problem, dear. And you'll I'll see you soon with a solution. She scowls and jumps off the edge into whatever it is you're standing on. Ominous. Okay, she's actually here. The shelves are not behaving this the way bookshelves do when you're awake. Take a closer look. You grab a book from the random bookshelf as it puffs out of existence. The Melting Mind. You're not sure what kind of book this is. Avant-garde social commentary, psychedelic research journal, total nonsense created by a random nighttime firing of your own neurons. You get Mind Melt. Feels the opponent's mysticality to itself. Oh, wow. Well, back to the real world. Okay. Whoa. Hey. Um. Can I help you? Alarmingly, a man in an expensive suit is standing at the foot of your bed. What the heck? Who are you? You may call me Don Toblerone. Really? I represent a certain organization of, shall we say, like-minded criminals. Organized criminals. Like a mob. Wait... You're the dawn of the local mob? The mob boss in my room, personally? No, 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 no. I'm not the dawn. That's just merely my nomenclature. It's an abbreviation for Donald. Oh, well, that's a little confusing. It has been a matter of some confusion. Yes, I do have a sobriquet. But I don't care very much for it. Well, what is it? Donny the... Th the s yeah, I bit my tongue. Donny Thesaurus. I'm going to hazard a guess and say they call you that because uh, you like long words. That is very astute of you. Of course, this assutation comes as no surprise to me. My associate, my associators tell me you handled yourself well during the conflagration at the refrigerator manufacturum. Um, do you actually own a thesaurus? I handle myself well all the time. I am here to propound you for considerationing a certain proposition. Does that even... Is that a word? Come again? I'm here to make you an offer. Oh, can I refuse it? Certainly. Though your refusitation would be, shall we say, unadvisatory. Well, what's the offer? Hmm. From time to time, my collegiates and I have a certain requirement, but lack the necessity the necessary manpower to achieve them. At such junctures, we make lucrivital arrangements with certain capable individuals. We find ourselves at this moment at a juncture, such as junctures I have thus subscribed. So you want me to do contract work for the mob? Exactly. Um, sure, maybe that's what I am, a mobster? Uh, no way you can take your offer and shove it. I think about... Maybe that's what I am. A mobster. You're an excellent decision. If I may articulate such. So what happens now? Just sit tight, as they say, and we will call upon you telephonatically. He gives you a curt nod and leaves the room through the window. It takes him three or four tries to work the latch. Well, all right, then. Okay. So apparently I work for the mob. Hey there, Viola. Um, how'd you sleep? 
fine until a mob guy crawled in my bedroom window. Oh, yeah, the window's pretty lousy. Anyway, the next antique I need you to find is a compass. Oh, no, that's, that's our girl. Anyway, the next antique I need you to find is a compass. The directions kind, not the circles kind. The Detectotron says it's near Crystal Dream Lake. Hmm. I don't know where that is, but I bet it's too far to walk. Do you have a car I can borrow? No, but I have something even better than that. Two cars? A bus pass. Just stop out front of your gateway to a whole wide world of adventure. Got a bus pass. Swell, thanks. Um, where do I go when I get there? Unfortunately, I couldn't get more specific readings than near the lake. Something about the place is making my instruments go all screwy. Anyway, here's the map. You got the Crystal Dream Lake postcard. And the location for the lighthouse. This postcard. It has a map of the lake on it. It has a picture of the lake on it. Yeah, that's what a map is. The picture of a place. I guess I can't argue with that logic. Hmm. It's a door to nowhere again. Open it. Still a brick wall. Okay. Um, you check for the message pad. There's a note for call Don T with the phone number. Call the mob back. Salutations. Whom is telephoning, might I inquire? Hi, Don. It's me, Viola. Uh, you reciprocated my missive. Commendable. Yeah, what's up? There is an assignment for which I require your performation. An assignment? Were I the comedic sort, I might refer to it as an undertaking. <laughs> ah, I'm glad you aren't the comedic sort, so you want me to kill someone? Okay. Your eager tood is appreciated. Permit me to elaboratize upon the mission paramedics. Uh-huh. There is an antiquated distillery near Crystal Dream Lake. Grandpa Joe's Distillery, to be precautious. It was abandoned when Prohibition began, albeit with its liquid manufacturing equipment intact. A group contrapositive to our own has claimed it as their territory, and we wish these bloodsuckers to be evicted with extreme prejudice. So, you want me to give... The bums rush to a bunch of rival mob goons. There is no underground criminal organization that rivals our own in this vicinity. When I say bloodsuckers, it is my intention that you will observe the phraseology with a high degree of literalness. The group in which I refer to are Nosferatu. What? Nosferatu, Lingasaur, Stragoni, Draculas, va uh, vampires. Okay, okay, I get it. You're telling me that there are actual vampires as part of this world? Affirmative. They have been a pain in our necks for quite an extensive period of time. Oh, and I appear to have inadvertently voiced another whimsic whimsicum. What is, what is some? I didn't notice. All right, I'll take care of the vampires. I guess it isn't that much weirder than the fishmen. Where's this distillery, anyway? Don Toblerone gives you directions to the place eventually. Location unlocked, Grandpa Joe's Distillery. In addition to that, you will be requiring the combination for the lock. Let me guess, it's one, two, three, four? Certainly not. Kindly allow us the credit of modicum of operational scrutinizing. We selected the most unassailable combination possible. Nine, 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 nine. All right, bye. Well, oh, and there's the hardware store. Well, what do you know? Perfect timing. But that's all the time that we've got for today. So take care, everybody.